What's up guys, it's Ed from TechSource and welcome to my Ryzen 5 benchmark video. As always, we're gonna cut straight to the point and look at temps, overclocking performance, gaming benchmarks, as well as take a look at the productivity side. The samples I have with me are the 1500X and 1600X, which are part of the Ryzen 5 lineup. And these were aimed to compete against Intel's 7600K and 7700K, so I will be comparing them against each other. As always, at the end of this video, I'll be going over the frames per dollar to figure out which of these CPUs give you the best bang for your buck. So the 1500X is a quad-core CPU with a 3.5 GHz base clock, and it will cost you $189, while the 1600X is a 6-core processor with a 3.6 GHz base clock. Also, the 1500X does come with their Wraith Spire RGB cooler, while the 1600X does not. So I managed to overclock both Ryzen 5 chips to 4 GHz at decent volts. However, the KB Lake chips proved once again that they are much more efficient at overclocking. 5 GHz at 1.3 volts for the 7700K and 4.9 on the 7600K. The coolest out of the bunch were the 77 and 1500X coming in in the low 30s during idle and the hottest chips were actually the 1600X and 7600K hitting close to 80 degrees on full load once overclocked. Let's kick off the benchmarks by checking out the Cinebench scores. So the 1500X beat out the 7600K in the multi-score benchmark, but scored lower in the single core. Then we got the 1600X way up there at 1242 for the multi-core, which makes sense since it is a 6-core processor. However, none of AMD's chips come close to the single core processing power of the 7700K. So our first productivity test is Handbrake, which is a free transcoder for video files. I exported a 3 minute 4K file using the H.264 codec, and as expected, the 1600X rendered it out the fastest at 2 minutes and 19 seconds. But surprisingly, the 7700K wasn't that far off. I kind of expected a much bigger gap between the two since the 1600X does have two additional cores. However, when looking at the Vegas Pro exporting times, it's starting to make more sense. The 1600X finishing a little over 7 minutes, rendering out the same 3 minute 4K file, while the 7700K finished a little over 9 minutes. Interestingly enough, both the 7600K and the 1500X are neck and neck for both of the render tests. So at this point, it's pretty obvious. If you're a heavy user for multi-threaded applications like editing programs, streaming, or 3D modeling, the 1600X is your best option if you're deciding between these chips. But what if you're only gaming? So first up, we got GTA 5 and 1080p, and it looks like the 7700K takes the lead with a massive 56 frame difference against the 1500X and 1080p. The 7700K is 35% faster than the 1500X and the 7600K is 16% faster. But look at the overclocked performance, the 1500X gained 16 frames just by overclocking. However, sadly, both Ryzen 5 chips fell short compared to the 7600K and the same can be said in 1440p. Although the scores didn't change much. It was interesting to see that the 1500X was severely bottlenecked since both 1080p and 1440p scores were identical on GTA 5. Moving on to Ashes of the Singularity on DX12, I did run the CPU focused benchmark instead of the GPU since we are comparing CPUs in this video and that's kind of why the scores are lower than usual. But it looks like the 1600X slightly pulled ahead of the 7600K, however it's still no match compared to the 7700K in 1080p as well as 1440p. It doesn't look like the scores change that much between the two. Hitman is next and we can see a substantial lead between the 1500X and 7700K once again. That's a 42 FPS gap making the 7700K 35% faster than the 1500X and the 7600K 30% faster than the 1500X. We did get identical scores for 1440p which implies that there is bottlenecking present. And next up is Metro Last Light. The performance difference is, once again, monumental between the 1500X and 7700K. A 37 FPS difference making the 7700K 24% faster than the 1500X, however the 7600K is only 6% faster than the 1500X. The gap decreases as we bump up the resolution to 1440p since the GPU is doing most of the work, however there is still a 7-12 to 12 frame difference between the 1500X and the KB Lake CPUs. Division is another game I tested in DX11 and surprisingly all CPUs performed neck and neck. Then again, Division isn't really a demanding title. The same can be said in 1440p, even after overclocking, we pretty much got the same scores across the board. And finally, we got Battlefield 1. Not a huge gap in performance between the chips for 1080p, however the frames are pretty much identical when bumping up the resolution to 1440. 
So obviously the 7700K is still the king of all quad cores, but how much more are you really paying for it? Taking a look at the frames per dollar, we can see that you're getting a little over two frames per dollar on the 7700K, whereas you're getting nearly three frames with the 1500X. You get 30% more bang for your buck going with the 1500X than the 7700K and a 9% value compared to the 7600K. Now if you're gaming on a budget and still need a powerful processor for multi-threaded applications like I mentioned before, the 1600X is still a solid choice. Even though the 7600K has better value than the 1600X, these scores aren't taking into account the rendering tests where the 1600X did really great. So when it comes to productivity, the 1600X is the better option. So ask yourself this guys, are you looking to get the most value out of your next PC or do you want the best and not care about how much you pay? I feel like that's what it always comes down to when comparing AMD against Intel either price per performance or the best performance at a cost of a premium. But I hope this video helped you guys decide on your next processor or maybe you're just watching to learn something. Either way, if you liked it, leaving a like would be highly appreciated. And if you didn't like it, feel free to dislike as well. That is cool too. Thank you so much for watching guys. Uh, leave all the parts or the CPUs I talked about down below if you guys are interested. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.